Prestige pawnbrokers. Oh, wow, that is amazing. Is part of an exclusive world. Dear Monty, crown for the queen. <laughs> Where Britain's elite. We drink a lot of champagne and have a good life. Exchange luxury items. Oh, wow. I actually saw Kate Middleton wearing it the other day. Oh, wow. The big money. You're looking well into millions. Oh, my God. I don't know what to say. <laughs> the man behind it all. This is unbelievable. Is entrepreneur James Constantino. We did in almost anything of value, but what I love the most is the ones that make me the most profit. I'm over the moon. Oh, Brilliant. Are you? This time. I love it. Some eye catching jewellery. Love it, love it, love it. A minuscule motor car. Well, put your foot down a bit more. I am. And a big announcement. The employee of the month actually is. Welcome to the world. That is absolutely Beautiful. stunning. Of posh porn. Over 1,000 pieces of jewellery come through the doors of the pawn shop every week. It's a Gucci watch. Yeah. It's very unusual. I've never seen anything like that. And although boss James likes to deal with the big money pieces personally, Hatton Garden manager Alicia oversees trade day to day. I've just received an email with some images of a watch and a ring that the client is looking to sell. They're really nice high-end items. It doesn't actually say in the email um, whether or not she wants to sell it. Um, she might be looking for a loan, so we're going to have to find that out from the client. It's a lovely matter of pearl, I think, ladies' Rolex. Again, can't tell the size from the image. And a very beautiful diamond ring. Um, so there is a lot of potential in these items. We just have to see them. They might look completely different in real life. A lot of the clients have got retail figures in their head. There is a massive difference between retail figures and second-hand trade values. Hi, Kitty. How are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? The watch and the ring belong to 36-year-old yoga devotee, Kitty. Left hip forward, chin lifted, eyes forward. I get so much benefit out of it that it's such an important part of my life. Eyes to the ceiling, loud, strong, powerful, exhale, breath. I think I'm quite a positive and health-driven person, but, you know, I wouldn't miss the odd slice of cake. Six months ago, Kitty gave up her career as an IT manager. It wasn't fulfilling enough for me. It was actually quite soulless. I was really bored, and I thought, gosh, there has to be something else out there. Bring the body down slowly. Work your abdomen parallel to the floor. Now, I'm a people person. I don't think sitting behind a desk in front of a screen really is for me. It's very well getting paid and having a regular income, but I wasn't happy. Kitty's recently started a new business selling yoga clothes. So yeah, you can see we've sold quite a bit already. It's a bit surreal, really, to think yeah. that five months ago I had this idea. All the clothes are actually hung up in your studio, and it's great to actually see them. I have so many plans in the future for what I want to do. It's really good. Yeah. Now it's Kitty is determined to grow her fledgling business. Yeah, I would, I would do That'd some men's shorts. Yeah, there's it's definitely a um, gap. I, I think there is a gap, especially yeah. when I go to a class and I see men wearing things that they shouldn't wear. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be out and about and meeting people. And the yoga community is very friendly anyway. Um, it's quite different from IT. Um, IT people are friendly too, but they are just more reserved. Kitty has lived in London since moving from Hong Kong when she was 18. It didn't feel like a big move at the time um, because all my friends were going abroad to study overseas. It was only when I got here that I realised, oh my goodness, what have I done? Because it's a very different environment from Hong Kong. This is a photo of my parents on my graduation day many years ago in London. They're both um, really quite happy people. I have a really good relationship with them, um, and for particularly for this startup because they've got years of textiles um, industry experience and knowledge, and they've been amazing in terms of supporting me to get this up and running. And her parents have given their blessing for her to pawn a special birthday present. 
Rolex is run in my family. My grandparents have Rolexes, my mum and dad have Rolexes. Um, I've always seen it as quite a grown up item. Um, so I guess maybe that's my parents' message to tell me that now I'm properly grown up to get a Rolex watch. I have no idea how much this watch is worth. It's a birthday present, so I, was going, I wasn't going to ask my parents how much did you pay for it, it's a bit rude. <laughs> Kitty is also looking to pawn another gift to promote her business. The ring is beautiful. I got it from an ex-boyfriend. Although it's beautiful, it just doesn't hold the sentimental value to me anymore. With both the watch and the ring, I'm hoping to get a loan of at least £5,000 um, to help me with my business. It's definitely not cheap to actually get into the most popular yoga magazines. About £500 per issue, which is a lot of money. But I'm hoping that with at least £5,000, I'll be able to make it into nearly a years of issue. It will be up to Alicia to decide whether the items are worth the £5,000 loan that Kitty needs. With such a variety of goods coming through the doors of the pawn shop... You are looking at up to sort of £5,000 figure. ..James has to be able to multitask. Joy. Yeah? Come and have a look at this, look. What have you got? Something what have exciting? What have I got? Cool, have I? Wow. You smell nice. Thank you. You smell of soup. Charming. Okay. <laughs> what do you think of this? Sapphire and diamond bracelet, fully looks, encrusted. Looks quite looks, nice, doesn't it? Looks quite nice, yeah. trisha has got quite a few items. She's got a ring here, actually. I haven't shown you the ring, have I? Look, look Is at that. Is that diamond, diamond cluster? What do you think of that? Very unusual. God, can you like, be a little bit more excited about it? <laughs> uh, so far I've had, yeah, it's okay and very unusual. Okay, I've James, called you in here for a reason. No, I, it's, it's... Not it's, to it's, tell me it's unusual. Looking very exciting. It's looking exciting. <laughs> I'm going to give up in a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, it's nice. Thank you, James. <laughs> We've got the bread and the olives ready for service. James's client is 58-year-old hotel manager Trish from Surrey. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, really, from time to time. I think they go sometimes, quick, she's here. Have you done this? Have you done that? My husband and I, we're joint managers and we live on site of a 17-bedroomed hotel. What table is this one? 108. OK, I'll take this if you want to bring the mussels as well. She's a lovely lady. She talks a hell of a lot, but, you know, it's, uh, that's, that's why I married her. She keeps me on my toes. Honestly, I think he's behind me and I'm talking. And next minute he's gone, and so I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I've been to the office for two minutes. What you like when we go shopping together? Yeah, right, yeah. yeah you run off, don't you? Tells lots of lies. <laughs> When the couple get time to relax, they head to their holiday home in Cyprus. It's just where our hearts are, really, and it's our little paradise. But obviously, you, to keep on top of any kind of property, you've got to keep, obviously, investing in it and spending money on it. Trish hopes selling some jewellery will get her the funds she needs. There's four items. First piece is um, it's a very, very beautiful gold necklace. It's over 100 years old. I was married um, to an Iranian. His mother was very, very sweet, very charming, and it was a gift to me from her. This piece is a solid gold coin. I believe it's the Shah of Iran's coronation. It was given to me by my ex-brother-in-law, so I'm very, very interested to know how much it will be worth. It's a beautiful Edwardian diamond ring, a gift from my husband, Declan. I have worn this a lot of times when I was younger. Declan bought me this. He said he got the sapphire because it goes with my blue eyes. Oh, that's romantic, isn't it? <laughs> and here I am now looking to sell it. <laughs> The minimum that I would take for the four pieces of jewellery is about 20 000 to 25,000. The biggest thing is the property in Cyprus. And then what's left over, I may treat him to a quad bike. 
as long as it's got two seats and I can sit on the back. Long-serving staff member Lawrence has received an inquiry of historic interest. I've just had this come in. Uh, it's a 14th to 15th century gold ring. This is very interesting because the gentleman who actually found it found it with a metal detector. I mean, I'm interested in anything historical, that's part of my job, but I've never actually come across a gold ring of this age being brought into the business, so it's actually a first for me. I like the high tones on it, but also the low tones can be good. 50-year-old metal detecting enthusiast Dave is the owner of the gold ring. That's a good signal, but the actual detector itself is saying it's tin foil, so we'll leave that one. I used to do a lot of fishing, but this just took over. It's much more better. <laughs> there seems to be a lot of rubbish in this area. I got into it where there was the village I lived at, an old bloke used to go metal detecting. He loaned me a detector when I used to go out with him, and then after that I just got hooked. I've had gold pendants, medieval pendants, I've had a hoard of Bronze Age axes, countless Roman artefacts and finds. Well, that's my only good find of the day. We've got a 1800 um, George I, it's a half penny. Doesn't mind what it is, what you find, you know, it'll all give you that buzz at the end of the day when you're digging the hole because you, you just don't know what you're going to dig out. Just need one. That's lovely, Pleasant. Well done. That's really good. Dave's partner, his go. two daughters, and son Devon also share his passion. Yeah, it's one of Daddy's metal detecting shirts, isn't it? Constance? It's an apron, isn't it, Constance? Whenever me and my dad go on metal detecting digs, um, we have a really, really great time. Last year, Dave unearthed potentially his most valuable item yet. This is my gold ring I found. As soon as I got it out of the ground, I knew it was a, an old ring. I didn't realise how old it was. Been dated 14th, 15th century by the British Museum. Yeah, the ring is um, one of the nicest items I've found. The intricacy of the work that's actually taken out on this is absolutely incredible. Um, and it just beggars belief how they actually get the detail into items like this. Crazy golf, go-kart. Now Dave is hoping to sell the ring and treat the family. Um, we're looking for a weekend away with the kids and um, trying to find something with a bit more entertainment. And we're looking at a thousand pound plus, you know, and then you've got spending money on top, like, so, you know, you could be anything from 1,500 pounds, so any money that we get is going to be well appreciated. Joe speaking. Opening a branch in London's jewellery quarter has boosted the company's big bling Hello, footfall. Hi. I have a five carat pear cut. That is gorgeous, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is lovely. Oh, fantastic. It's a lovely piece. With Thank more jewellery so coming over the counter, boss James has hired new assistant manager and gemologist Michael. Becoming a gemologist was sheer chance, to be honest. I just had an opportunity to start studying diamonds and gemstones, and I took it, thinking it would be a hobby, and suddenly it became a, a full-blown career. All right, Hello, thanks. Nara, girl. Thanks, James. Cheers. Today, James has decided to give his newest employee his biggest challenge yet. I've been really cautious about giving Michael high-end assets to appraise, but I thought now it's time to give him something really special to get his teeth into. So this, uh, this customer brought in this quite incredible 71 carats oval tanzanite, uh, and you've got loads of diamonds around. It's a really beautifully designed ring. This, this isn't really comparative with the normal tanzanites we get. The size is, is massive. If the clarity was as good in the diamonds, at the size you're looking into the millions. You can get lost looking in, into a stone like this. The Tanzanite ring belongs to 53-year-old Lucy. Are you still on that diet with no butter on your bread? No. And her youngest of two sons, 24-year-old Gareth. She's lovely. 
Can you put it straight in the washing machine for me? Great thing on your left. Ha, ah, very funny. I do all the cooking. <laughs> I do all the washing. I do all the hoovering. I do all the cleaning. Um, hmm. I see she's uh, one of contenders for best mum, yeah. I just disappointed I haven't got a mug seeing best son, but oh well. No, but he's got stupidity is not an excuse. <laughs> That's why she's only a contender. <laughs> this mum and son live in South Wales along with Lucy's ten cats. Oh, come on, sweeties. Come on. I also go down to an industrial area every night and feed the colony of cats that I've done since 1999. Good boy. I don't even really like cats much, but I'm... Um, I suppose. <laughs> Gareth goes out to, you know, quite a bit, so they're company for me. It's nice. Sadly, the last couple of years have left a void in Lucy's life. Dave was my husband. Um, he passed away two years ago in June. He died of cancer. He was a full-time soldier for 19 years, man and boy, and then he became a policeman. Great sense of humour, Dave. He was always the life and soul of the party. He was always wearing wigs out and dressing up, even when it wasn't a dress-up night, because that's what he did. He was a, a, a bit of a fun guy. Sorry, Dave. Losing her husband prematurely has driven Lucy to take a leaf out of his book. I've devised my own bucket list. And the, the first thing I went and was had my ears pierced at the top, which was uh, quite adolescent. And then it was to go to Hyde Park and watch Party in the Park, which was brilliant last year. Well, then, um, way down on my bucket list was to go to New Zealand. And I've decided that I don't really want to wait. There are three generations of family out there that I have never seen, and I'd like to do that. Oh, my God, it's stunning. I mean, it's just breathtaking, isn't it, really? Is it? But the money Lucy needs for the trip is locked up in an impulse purchase made from a TV shopping channel two years ago. That's a nice one. A 71-carat Tanzanite ring. It was purely by chance. It was on the telly, wasn't and it? And then um, it was a one-off where they had all the biggest gem weights that you could possibly think of. When I saw it, I thought, that that's a piece I would invest in. That's, that's caught my eye. Gareth said, go on, ma'am, go halves with me. I, I, I got to be honest, I didn't think. It was just like, OK, OK, I'll do it, I'll do it. And, and we did. A decision Lucy's started to regret. Gareth wants it as an investment, a long-term investment. Gareth's got a lifetime to invest in and I've got a short lifetime to do the things I'd like to do. The last few years have taught me that instead of just planning things, just get on and do it. It's going to be a trip of a lifetime. You know, if I don't do it now, when, when am I going to do it? Um, I've decided, I've made my mind up, I'm going to go. To fund the New Zealand trip, Lucy wants to pawn the Tanzanite ring and is looking for a £10,000 loan. It's most definitely worth pawning so she can go now rather than later. I know it's somewhere she'll love to go. This is for me. Primarily, it's for me. Sorry, just getting a little bit teared up there. Lucy's dream of crossing the globe now rests on how much the Tanzanite ring is worth. At the Weybridge branch... Hello. Hi, Hi. there. Hotelier Trish has bought her jewellery in for James to evaluate. Hi, Trish, are you all right? Hi, James. How are you doing? Very well, nice to meet you. We're all colour coordinated. Yes, we are. Wonderful. <laughs> Grab a seat. Thank you. I've got four pieces of um, jewellery, which are very nice pieces. Hope Lovely. you agree. Uh, the first one is an Iranian necklace. It's over a hundred years old, so oh, it's right. uh, it's quite a special piece. Do you want to sell this or loan against it? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to? I would like to sell it. Well, I would like to think that somebody would get great pleasure out of wearing it because I don't wear it anymore. Okay. The other piece, I believe, it's. Um, the Shah of Iran, his coronation. Oh, OK. You can see that's a uh, high content of gold in it. So some of these commemorative coins can be just the weight of the gold, but okay. this probably or could have some historic value. So going away from the Iranian gold, um, here I have a bracelet 
which uh, was a present off my husband. Right. It's very, very pretty, very blingy. Let's see any marks on it. Yeah, so it's 18 karat gold, white gold. Potentially there could be a lot of money in this. Is this something you want to sell? Yes, yes, it would be, yes. Okay. And the last one is um, an Edwardian cluster diamond ring. Again, very beautiful. It's too big cluster-wise. Right. A little bit tight on the finger. Now this is uh, quite a sort of statement piece, isn't it? Yeah. The centre stone is quite exceptional. It's very bright. Quite often they use poor quality stones in these cluster rings because you can't sort of home in on them uh, and mm. the way they're set you can disguise a lot of the uh, imperfections in the stone. What sort of money were you looking at, do you know? Or did you have a figure in? Um, well, I mean my figure is 35 to, to, to 40 thousand okay. pound. Where did you get that figure from? I've never had a valuation to be quite honest because this is so old. Yeah. It may have a bigger price ticket than what we what we realise, so I, I might be going over the top, but that's well, why I mean, I've come to you, James. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll try our best. Thanks yeah, for coming in. That's lovely, thank you very lovely. much. Good to help. see you. All right, thank lovely, you. thank Cheers. you. Bye. Bye. It'd be nice to get these uh, looked at by another set of eyes and try and get uh, back to Trisha with a figure. garden, James's personal assistant Joe is feeling on top of the world. Don't you just get up some days and just think nothing is going to throw you off course or make you miserable? Yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. You do? Yeah. Is it today? Not today, no. Mine is. Isn't it good if we don't get the same day, in a way, because then when I can cope with everything, like your empire, and you're a bit off, it won't matter. Yeah, it's a good, really good idea, that. Yeah. Write it down so you don't forget it. I don't need to write things down because I'm not very forgetful. Am I, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> Yoga entrepreneur Kitty has brought in her Rolex watch and diamond ring to see if Alicia will loan her £5,000 against them. Hello. Hi. 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 Um, I've brought some items in that I'm hoping you can take a look at and then sure, possibly give me a loan. Um, so the first one is a watch. OK, you sent us an email, haven't you? Yes, yes, I have, yeah. It's brand new, it's never been worn. OK, yes, it looks in really good condition. Okay. And the second item is a Boucheron ring. I was wondering how it's going to look like in real life, so... Yeah, oh, sorry. wow! It's beautiful. So what are you looking to do with these? Um, I'm hoping to get a loan uh, for minimum £5,000 okay. to help me with my new business. Are you happy to leave them with us? I'm happy to leave them with yeah. you and see what you think. OK, of great meeting you. Thanks you for too. coming in. Thank you, thank you. Have a good day. You bye. too, bye. They're really resellable pieces, even though Kitty is only looking for a loan. We have to look at the market, the potential market for them, and this watch will definitely sell in five minutes. In Hatton Garden, Lawrence has called upon an antique jewellery expert for his opinion on Dave's gold ring. Hello. Peter? Yeah. Brilliant. We'd like to come through. Okay. Nice to meet you at last after we've. Uh... Talked on the phone on several occasions, and it's got something nice to show you. There we are. Ah, OK. Right. I was quite amazed by the the work on it. It's really nice. It's uh, all engraved, and it, of course it used to be enameled. Yes. But all the enamel is gone. They always are. Have you seen many of these? A few, yeah. They are rare. Yeah. But they're not that rare, but yeah. they are rare, yes. Well, that's what I like to hear. There's another one. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 1400 the date, English. They're yeah. always English. I don't know why, but they are always English. Would it be somebody of wealth that would have yes. this ring? So that's what I, I was thinking. Because, what is it? Three grams or three and a half grams? Yeah. In those days, imagine, you could buy two houses on one of them <laughs> because it was only for the wealthy. Yeah. So now the sort of premium point is, um, can my client buy two new houses here with this? No, <laughs> definitely not. There's not enough material and not enough buyers. Yeah. It's the funny thing that's hard to buy, 
and kind of hard to sell. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you for your time, Peter. Thank you. I'll be in touch and we'll okay. have a chat. All right. Cheers. Second, I'll just transfer you through. At the pawn shop's head office in Hatton Garden, Michael's been evaluating Lucy and Gareth's 71 carat tanzanite ring. I was really pleased with Michael's appraisal of the tanzanite, but with something as unusual, it's really, really important to get a second opinion. With a £10,000 loan at stake, James is taking the ring to jewellery expert Ian. Ian really loves his coloured stone, so I'm going to pop in and see him just so he can give me a value on it and see if we can get a deal done for the client. Hi. Hello, You all right? I haven't seen you for a while. No, you're just too nervous to come in. Here. Here's a take advantage of you. Well, you know, there is that, I suppose. Oh. I've got something you might like. Really? I bet you have. For what about that? Oh, my God, fathers. Do you like that? Wow. What an amazing colour. Mm. Tanzanite. 71 carats, I'm told. Oh, my God, look at the shank. It's absolutely fabulous. I love this work. Yeah, it's quite an unusual thing to come in at such wow. a size. The beauty about these tanzanite stones is whenever you look at them, they always look different. Mm. Well, you know, from what I can see, there's no real signs of heat treating. No, I'd say it's perfectly correct. At one time, you know, this would have been, like, between five and 800 pounds a carat. Yes. It has dropped in price. So why is that? No, just fashion. just one of the gone out of fashion. But it will go up. All the big stones have disappeared. There's no more coming out of the mine. So I should tread on the side of caution with this one then. Absolutely, madame. Absolutely. Lovely my to darling. see you. Well, again. It's good to see you again. I shall see you soon, yeah? Yes. Be good. Behave yourself. Oh of course, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> The interesting thing about this ring is that uh, big stones are becoming rarer and rarer. And in time, this tanzanite could be worth a hell of a lot of money. The only problem is, are we going to be at the money she needs? I don't know. With more traditional items, James knows exactly where to go. Trish has been in to see me. I've got her jewellery with me. Just for these unusual pieces, it's nice to get a second opinion on them. Uh, I'm going to pop in and see Ian. Hi. How are you? Hello. You all right? Oh, good to see you. How are you doing? Very well, yes. I've got something here for you, Ian. Mm -hmm. I love a big packet, darling. That's why I'm here, mate. That's why I'm here. Get it out. Get it out. Oh, all right. Don't, don't rush me. Don't rush me. <laughs> What do you think of that? It's a little coin. We think we know where we are with it, but okay. you never know with these old coins. Oh, goodness. The majority of these coins that are foreign, the issue is the carat. Right. They mark them like 22 carat. And they just stamp them up as they want. Yeah? <laughs> Whatever they want to do. Yeah. They always turn out to be 21. Mm. So have it tested. Gold weight only. Gold weight for yep. that coin? Yeah, just okay. gold weight. Well, now this is um, another gold piece, but according to the client, it's got it's quite an old piece from Iran. It's apparently over 100 years old. It's got some damage to it, and there's a piece missing, which is here. Mm. Um, I suppose it could be repaired. It's not worth it. No. I tell you why. This is not English taste. It's gold. That's it. The weight of the gold on that as well. Gold. That's not going to be of any great value then, is it? So it's really. quite light. Yeah. She might be a bit disappointed with that. <laughs> and here we have something that we think is actually quite special. Wow, now that's pretty, very pretty. The stones are very nice. Very nice, very clean. It's very good quality. 18 karat white. English hallmarked. I've got another piece here which mm -hmm. I think you'll, uh, you'll quite like. Wow. Now you talk it. Mm. <laughs> you this like that? is me. I love it. Yeah? Love it, love it, love it. I could do with another white gold one here. I'm going to carry it away. I'm bought with it. <laughs> you don't find those sapphires every day. No. And your money is in the sapphires. Because the, these coloured stones are just rocketing in price. Yes. Yeah. You can't get them. Yeah. You know. Lovely. Well, look, I shall get back to the office, do mm -hmm. a little bit of work, uh, talk to the guys, and see where we are with it. But uh, as usual, 
thank you very much, Ian, for your for your opinion, and I appreciate that very much. Anytime, James. Lovely. <laughs> thank you, oh. mate. Lovely. I'll let you know how I get on. Okay. Cheers, thank Ian. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> it's always nice, with, especially with colour stones, to get a second opinion on them. Uh, Ian's run his eye over them, and so uh, it just gives us a bit of confidence, really, when uh, it comes to buying these uh, bigger, more unusual pieces. In the front office, manager Alicia is appraising yoga entrepreneur Kitty's watch and ring. With Rolexes, it all depends on, on what sort of features they've got. And so, for example, with diamonds, it's always a lot more expensive than plain. When it comes to diamonds and Rolexes, watches especially, you have to do a lot of research. There is much more to it than just the looks. Even though it's a stunning piece, we need to find out if it's a fake. And as far as I'm concerned, both items were presents. So we do have to do the work. It's got a lovely brown mother of pearl face, which is also a quite unique um, face for, for a lady's Rolex. It's a 2015 model, which makes it even better. Not a single scratch on it. With brand new models, it's quite difficult to tell how, how much they'll be. So we've got this stunning Boucheron ring. Boucheron is one of the, the most um, famous uh, designer brands when it comes to jewellery, especially bridal jewellery. Um, they're very important historically. It comes with a special box and even a little booklet to certify that uh, where it came from and when it was purchased. It's got its own serial number. It's quite of an unusual design. It's got a big centre stone and then a lot of smaller stones on the shoulders. It creates that sort of basket. It is a stunning piece. It definitely looks much better in real life than it did in the picture. Even though Kitty is looking for a quite realistic amount, I still have to do a bit more research because as soon as you purchase these sort of items, the value depreciates drastically. Trish has arrived in Hatton Garden to find out if a buyer has been found for her collection of jewellery. I'm excited because it's like, oh, do day today, you know, what am I going to get offered by James? The main thing is the necklace because it's over 100 years old and it's all handmade. That's a piece that is quite unique that I'm really, really excited to find out just how much it's worth. Quite often we have clients come in and they think that because something's got some age to it that it's instantly worth a small fortune. And as such, I'm really a bit nervous about telling her the true value of the items. Thank you. Trisha, hi. Hello, James. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Grab a seat. Thank you. I'm very excited today, James. How are you? Yes. Well, that's good. I'm glad you're excited. <laughs> right. Um, down to business. What were you looking for? Um, I was hopefully looking between um, twenty-five and thirty thousand pound. When we first touched base with you, and you explained the history of uh, of the, the necklace, you, know, you, you said it was uh, over a hundred years old, or you believed it to be. Unfortunately, there's no real great value. It's basically the weight of the gold. It's hundreds as opposed to thousands. Yes. And unfortunately, with the coin, that is the case too. It's basically the weight of the gold. Now what I can tell you about the diamond ring is that the, the quality of the diamonds is absolutely fantastic and commercially, this is the sort of thing we buy all day long. The diamonds are really strong, they're really bright and vibrant, they're really good colours, really good clarity, and we're really quite taken by that, so that's a good bit of news. Yeah, usually fine as long as it sparkles, some that's people right. are just happy well, with does, that, aren't they? Yeah, well that does a little bit more than sparkle, so that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, now this bracelet is really, really, absolutely super. The three sapphires um, are of outstanding clarity and they're a fantastic cut and symmetry and they're all matching which is absolutely amazing. The two pieces absolutely stunning. Yeah. Over the moon with those. Unfortunately because of the value of the two yellow gold items uh, it did sort of pull the number down quite considerably. But I can tell you that I am able to offer as a whole package 
£65,000. Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> My <Yeah>. God. <laughs> you, you happy with that? Happy. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel? I feel absolutely gobsmacked, to be quite honest. I think that's a fantastic offer and, gosh, I can't believe. <laughs> Help me down with a feather. <laughs> well, thanks for coming in today. Pleasure, and, uh, thank we'll you. We'll get it all sorted out and get the money wide over to you. I'm really over the moon about that. Thanks thank for you. coming in. It's been great meeting you. Thank and you very you. much indeed. That was absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. I don't think Trisha actually realised what she had. All the money really was in the little bracelet and the and the ring. Trish is over the moon and I'm over the moon. I think James has done a fantastic day's work for me. It's, and I think it's time to go home and crack open the bubbly with my husband. Metal detecting enthusiast Dave is waiting on news from Lawrence to see if the sale of his historic gold ring will raise enough cash for a family holiday. Yeah, we're hoping for a bit of good luck with this phone call today. Um, yeah, we've had a real bad run of luck last month. We've had a cooker blow up on us. I've broken one of my metal detectors. The list's endless. <laughs> Just need some good luck. My only concern is whether Dave's got some outrageous figure he wants. Because in my mind, we're coming in with a really good offer. And if he doesn't go for it, I'll be very surprised. But it's really down to what people think. Hello. Hi, Dave. It's Lawrence from Prestige. All right, Lawrence. How are you? I'm very good, thank good, you Good, good, good. Been looking forward to your call. I bet you've been looking forward to my call. It's been a bit a while. Uh, it's an unusual item. It does take a bit longer than our normal quick service. It's a lovely, lovely ring. It's a lovely item. It's yeah. got age to it. It's definitely 14th century, and our experts seem to think it's one of the apostles. Yes, yeah. The issue that was brought up with it the size of the ring and what would you actually do with it? Right. Because it's quite small and it's not something, it's a gentry definitely. But the size is more like a lady's size, so it's not a piece of jewellery that somebody could wear. Right, yeah. Well, I have got an offer for you, which I hope you'd be happy with. Yeah. We would give you... Two and a half thousand for it. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Happy, man. Oh, yeah, very happy. Thank you very much, Lawrence. That's brilliant. Oh, you're welcome. So, you know, you guys, well, what I'm really happy is I've learned something. So when a ring like this comes in again, I'll have a good idea of what it's worth. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. thank you for bringing it in. Thank you. Speak to you soon. All right, thank you. Bye. Cheers. Bye bye. 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 Two and a half thousand. Yay! <laughs> Over the moon with that. I am sorely tempted to start going home, buy myself a cheap metal detector and start digging up the garden. Because if we find a few of these, that will set my holiday for the next few years. It will get me and the kids away on a holiday. So, yeah, over the moon. Thank you, Lawrence. In Hatton Garden, Michael has a decision on the £10,000 loan Lucy wants against her 71-carat Tanzanite ring. It's been a tricky one since it came in into the buyer's market and in like, recent years, whilst there is a lot of popularity, that sometimes the price does go down, especially with these larger stones. Hopefully we can, uh, we can still come to some sort of arrangement. Yeah, feeling a bit anxious. So riding on this phone call and whether or not I'll be able to go to New Zealand. Hello. Lucy. Is that Michael? It is. Yes. I'm sure you're aware. Why I'm calling? Yes. The, uh, get an idea of where we're coming from. OK. You know, the market for Tanzanite at the moment is, is tricky. It has dropped in the past few years, mostly because it's become so, such a popular stone. Yeah. The market is almost saturated. Yeah. But obviously what you're needing is money quickly. To that end. Yeah. We can offer a loan at the moment for for the ten thousand that you're lo you're looking for. Oh wow! Oh, that's, that's <laughs> great. Yeah, I, I'm thrilled. I can now go into into my travel agent and, and start pricing it for real. Yeah, yeah. Chuffed about that. We can actually help with this. Thank you ever so much, Michael. I do appreciate it. Great. Thanks. Take care. Lovely. Thank you. Bye. Michael is basically 
given me the opportunity of doing something that I didn't think I ever thought possible to do. And that's, that's got to make me feel really good about it. Really good. At the end of the day, it was, it was all about her. So she's happy, I'm happy. At the moment, it feels pretty good. It feels pretty good. Yeah. At head office, boss James's assistant, Joe has been on her feet all day. Stop it. My God, you are embarrassing. Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> Woo-hoo! <laughs> what the hell was that? Shame <laughs> that was her spine. <laughs> Woo! Whoops. Oh, my God, that was great. Anyway, that's part of yoga, you know. <laughs> Equally as into her yoga is Kitty, who's hoping for a loan against a watch and a diamond ring. I'm hoping to get a minimum of £5,000 on loan for the two items to help me with my business. I'm feeling quite positive, so fingers crossed I'll get the money that I'm looking for. Alicia is now ready to make her an offer, so has called her back into the Hatton Garden branch. Hi. 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 Good to see you again. Hi. Thanks. Are you excited to hear the news? Yeah, I'd like to see what I could get for it, yeah. How much were you looking for again? A minimum of £5,000. OK, and how much do you think they're worth? What's your feeling about them? I don't know. But I'd like to think I could borrow 5000 because the watch is brand new and the ring's quite nice, so... We've done some research. Um, luckily, we didn't have to do that much because they're quite straightforward items, but we still had to confirm everything. With the watch, unfortunately, you don't actually have the paperwork for it. Right. Um, it is in a pristine condition. It is a 2015 model with diamonds. With the ring, it's got everything, the box, papers, everything ready. So for the both items, you're looking at £10,000. £10,000? £10, Seriously? Seriously. Oh, my God. I'll wow. give you a minute. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> wow, I never thought I could get that much for it. Really? Ten? Yeah. That's incredible. Is that going to be helpful? Yeah, really, yeah. really helpful. Thank yeah. you very much. I'm glad that you wow. have. That's absolutely incredible. It's just made my day, really. It's always good to break the good news, and I'm happy that it will help her with her business. It will just drive me to work even harder uh, to get the ring and watch back, for sure.